Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the DSO-150 low-cost digital oscilloscope. This product was kindly sent from Banggood and you can find the link to the product page in the video description. I've gotten the assembled version with a case that costs around $40. If you want to save some money and you like soldering kits, you can get the kit version for approximately $25. However, you should keep in mind that these kits are a bit tricky to assemble and if you don't have much experience soldering, you might not be able to get it working. So, if you don't want to take risks, the assembled version will work straight away. Alongside your oscilloscope, you'll get a probe that has 10x attenuation switch. The product also comes with a one-page instructions manual that has a table describing some functions. The oscilloscope needs 9V DC power supply that doesn't come included in the kit. So, if you don't have one, make sure you get a 9V power supply when you get your oscilloscope. This is a very simple scope with a single channel, 200kHz bandwidth and 12-bit resolution. Of course this tool doesn't replace a real oscilloscope, but it's good enough for hobbyists looking to debug low-frequency signals or for learning purposes. Additionally, it's easy to use. It comes with an on and off switch at the bottom. At the top there's a switch to choose between ground, DC or AC coupling. Here you have the BNC connector, which is where you should connect your probe. This oscilloscope comes with a 1 kHz square wave generator at the top that you can use for testing purposes. At the front you have 4 buttons, Voltage Division, Time Division, Trigger and OK. There's also a rotor encoder to adjust the parameters. So let's test this oscilloscope. Apply power using a 9V DC power source. Wait a moment while it boots. Then connect the probe to the 1 kHz square wave generator. Hold the Sective and Trigger button simultaneously to reset to the default settings. Now, if you click on the voltage division button, this icon gets highlighted, and you can adjust the voltage scale. You can select the voltage division from 5 mV to 20 V. If you press the button again, this little arrow turns blue, which means you can rotate the knob to adjust the vertical alignment. Hold down the trigger button, so that the screen shows a steady image. In this button, you can adjust the time scale. You can select the time division as small as 10 microseconds, or as big as 500 seconds. However, if you select the big time division, it will probably get stuck. If you press the button again, this bar gets highlighted, and you can navigate through the time sampled. You can press the rotor encoder and when these two arrows appear, you are in fast mode adjustment. Press the rotor encoder again to go back to the slow mode adjustment. Press the OK button to freeze the signal and better analyze the wave. Press again to unfreeze. There are three trigger options, Auto, Normal and Single. And you can select Rising Edge or Falling Edge. You can also adjust the trigger level. When this arrow gets highlighted, you just need to rotate the knob to adjust the trigger level. If you hold the trigger button, it will set the trigger level to the signal's amplitude middle value. As you've seen previously, you can click the OK button to freeze and unfreeze the signal. Please note that when you freeze the wave, you cannot adjust the scales, as you can see. If you hold the OK button, you can get some measurements, like the frequency, duty cycle, maximum voltage, etc. So this scope can also act as a measurement tool. It's not very accurate, but gives you an idea of the values. Now let's test a different setup. Here we have an Arduino that is generating a PWM signal. The duty cycle of the PWM signal can be adjusted by rotating this potentiometer. If you want to test this setup, Check the written review below. We have the code and schematics that you need to follow. 
connect the probe to the output pin that is generating the signal and ground to the Arduino ground pin. Let's test it. The signal increases or decreases the duty cycle as we rotate the potentiometer. As you can see, we are receiving square signals with approximately 500 Hz frequency, which is the frequency of these Arduino PWM signals. This signal looks great on this oscilloscope and clearly gives you an idea on what's going on. To learn more about signals, you can also use a low-cost function generator like this to test different wave types with adjustable frequency and amplitude. In summary, I think this is a great oscilloscope given its price. Although this cannot be compared with a real oscilloscope, if you just want to measure duty cycle of PWM signals, read low-frequency periodic signals, or debug signals from your Arduino circuits, it works just fine. So, if you're an electronics hobbyist looking for a very cheap oscilloscope to debug and learn more about circuits, this could be a great option. You can find a link to the product page in the video description, as well as a link for a written review on MakerAdvisor.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe!